So, starting this new decade, computers are getting smaller and smaller, and they'll ultimately disappear. And we'll already wear them on our belt buckles. They'll be in our belts and our clothing. We're going to solve this problem. We have our displays. People like to watch displays on one hand, and people are watching movies on little devices like this. Uh, there are different types of devices. You can put them in your glasses, including ones that can actually detect your head motion. So as you move, the, display, the virtual display stays constant. That virtual display can be three-dimensional, because you can be in both eyes, and can overtake your whole visual field of view and put you in a virtual reality environment. I've tried prototypes for this at Stanford, uh, which are very realistic. Uh, it'll, it'll provide augmented real reality, where I can look at someone and it'll remind me it's your birthday next Tuesday. Remind me when people's names are, that would be very helpful. <laughs> that would be the killer app. Uh, actually, augmented reality is already an application on the iPhone. It's, you can just point the iPhone and you'll see the video on the screen of the building you're pointing at, and then it will actually show you what the stores and uh, coffee shops are, are in that building. Uh, so it's already starting to happen. We'll have a like, uh, effective uh, language translation. Uh, by 2029, 20 years from now, these technologies will be very mature. There'll be over a billion fold increase in capability for a shekel uh, in the power of these technologies, both hardware and software, including our understanding of, of the software of the human brain. Uh, our understanding of the brain, the purpose of reverse engineering the brain is not just to sort of copy your brain, it's really to understand its basic principles. What are the basic principles of human intelligence? And what engineering can do is if we can take basic principles and focus them and amplify them to create tremendous effects. Uh, take, for example, Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle is a subtle scientific principle that says there's less air pressure over a moving curved surface than a flat surface. And the scientists are still arguing about why that is the case. But engineering took that subtle principle and created the whole world of aviation. And as we understand the basic principles of intelligence, we can amplify them. We're not, we won't be limited to a neocortex that fits into a small skull. We can create very powerful systems. And we're going to merge with them. Uh, we're going to, 20, 30 years from now, we'll have these very powerful, tiny little computers, the size of blood cells, going in your body, keeping you healthy from inside, or in your immune system, uh, going inside our brain, interacting with the biological neurons, uh, downloading new software to those computers. If that sounds very futuristic, I point out you can put a computer in your brain today you happen to be a Parkinson's patient. It's not an experiment. It's an improved therapy. And the latest, and this has been actually pioneered here in Israel, the latest generation of this approved medical therapy is computer you put in your brain. It allows you to actually download new software to the computer inside your brain. And the New York Times a few weeks ago had an article expressing concern about people hacking into the software to download it in your brain. <laughs> so that's not blood cell size today. It's pea size. It's still pretty small. But if you look at what we can do today and look at the very impressive projects uh, that are displayed down the hall here and realize that these technologies will be a billion times more powerful in 25 years, 100,000 times smaller in key feature size, you get some idea of what will be feasible. And in honor of our, uh, my dialogue partner, I'll leave you with one last uh, trend. Uh, you know, a thousand years ago, uh, life expectancy was 23, so most of us wouldn't be here, and the rest of you would be senior citizens. I gave a talk recently to junior high school students, so seventh and eighth graders. Uh, he pointed out that if we were meeting a thousand years ago, we would all be senior citizens. Uh, life expectancy was 37 in 1800. There's no understanding of the germ theory of disease, no sanitation, no antibiotics, sugar and Mozart died in their 30s, and that was typical. So it's not pushing 80. This progress is impressive, but this is from the linear progress of health and medicine before it was information technology. Now that we actually understand our biology as a set of software processes that can model them and simulate them on the biological simulators, these technologies will be a million times more powerful in 20 years and it will go into high gear. Uh, according to my models, we'll be adding more than a year 
every year, not just the infant life expectancy, but to your remaining life expectancy. So as you go forward a year, your life expectancy will move on away from you. So if you can hang in there, <laughs> you may get to experience the heart of the century. Thank you very much.